When you tell people your house is heated with oil, kind of sounds like you're using something from the Stone Ages, but in reality, over 5.5 million houses in the US are still using heating oil. But what exactly is this stuff? Some people think it's whale oil, others will tell you it's dirty, and they can even blow your house up. But as you can see in this experiment, I can't even get this stuff to light. So how exactly can this oil heat a house? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how that process works and share three things about this oil that will really blow your mind, including that it might be one of the safest fuels you can use in your home. One of the main reasons oil is still popular is that you can get it delivered anywhere. You don't have to have any type of pipeline in your town. A truck will deliver it to your house. They put it into a tank or multiple tanks like this in your basement. And for many people, that single delivery can provide enough heat for them for an entire year. Oil alone can't provide any heat, so how do we turn it into something we can use? Well, that's done by connecting those tanks into this thing called an oil burner. Every oil burner has a pump on the side like this, and that moves the oil into the burner. To get inside, I've got to remove this fuel line, and then I can undo these screws so that I can flip this lid that's actually called an igniter. And here's that part that's doing all the work that most people have never seen before. This is called the nozzle assembly. The assembly has three major components. You've got those two white tubes, and those are called electrodes, and you've got that silver nozzle in the front. Now that nozzle is in fact a spray nozzle, and that's part of what makes this process work. The nozzles are a wearable item, and they're meant to usually be replaced once a year. But they really are a feat of mechanical engineering. On the bottom, you've got this brass bit, and it's actually called sintered brass, because those little brass particles you see act as a filter, so if there's any kind of big debris, it won't be able to clog the tip. That hole is machined to an exact tolerance, and it's set to a certain specification for your oil heating system. And when the oil comes into that nozzle, the pressure is increased to about 140 PSI. And with that super high pressure, along with a tiny hole, you're going to get a fine mist of oil, just like you'd see out of a hand sprayer like this. And that's one of the secrets about this oil that makes it surprisingly safe. If you had a natural gas heating system and you had any type of a small leak and it ignited, the entire building can explode and sometimes this actually happens. But heating oil alone isn't really explosive and as you saw, putting that lighter into it didn't do anything. But now here we're going to turn that oil into a mist to see what kind of an impact it has when you expose it to a flame. And you'll notice when I pour this small amount of the remaining oil into the dish, the oil will start to burn. Now the reason this is happening is because that dish is red hot, but when it's exposed to a ton of heat, or you turn it into a mist, it's going to be a lot more flammable. So how do we light it on fire inside your heating system? Well that's done by putting a spark across those two electrodes. Notice there's no wires that connect to the electrodes. It's done by putting those two springs on the lid so that when you close it, they actually make contact with the electrodes and now you can pump that electricity through, kind of like a spark plug in a car. Now the igniter inside your heating system is a lot bigger than the one in your car. You can see if I jump these terminals with a screwdriver, that spark is huge. This thing needs to put out enough spark to ignite that mist of oil so that you can have a flame inside your heating system. And now that you know how the process works, let's see it in action. Now most boilers and furnaces are going to have some type of a window, so you can actually peek at the flames while the thing is running. And here's what it looks like inside the boiler. Now I couldn't get a camera inside mine, but this is a large oil burner, and this is exactly what's going on. Now that might look pretty frightening, but it is a controlled environment designed for that type of a flame. And then your boiler or your furnace will turn that flame into some sort of usable heat, whether it's heating up radiators in your house or blowing hot air. But there's one more fact about heating oil that most people will never know. That cool red color is not natural. It's actually a dye that they add to the oil. Why would you put a dye in an oil that you're really never going to see? Well, heating oil and diesel fuel for your car are almost exactly the same. And you can use either fuel for both applications, except there's one big difference. The federal government taxes the diesel fuel that you use in your car or your truck, but they don't put any taxes on that home heating oil. So people could use the untaxed fuel in their car or truck and save a lot of money. Now you know the government was never going to allow that to happen, so they add the red dye to the untaxed fuel. So if a cop pulls over a truck 
One of the things they'll check is the color of the fuel, and if they pull it out and it's red, you're definitely going to pay a huge ticket for using illegal fuel on the roadway. I hope this video was helpful, got you to learn a little bit more about heating oil that you probably never knew before. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.